Eagles are sending Jalen Rager to the Vikings in exchange for a 2023 seventh, a 2024 conditional fourth that would be a fifth if certain statistical marks are not met. So basically, Rager to the Vikings for a seventh and a conditional fourth. That's a now, now there we go. There we go. About time. It, it good. Oh, by see. the way, but he made the team because he was great in but practice. But he was great in well, practice. Well, that's why yesterday I'm like, this doesn't smell right. No, no, no. no. But what you do is, it's so good. Rager's gone. Um, we'll find out who becomes the new fifth wide, wide out. They got them all back on the practice squad, so it'll be probably Covey for week one. Well, they need a punt returner. Well, or right. A kick Co- returner, yeah, period. And Covey can do that, so maybe Covey's back. We'll find out about that. But still, the way they conducted themselves, even without Rager, why did they have a good camp? Why are they the betting favorites to be to, to win the NFC East? Why did they do the moves that they made? They don't have to tell us chapter or verse about everything, but they didn't tell us about anything. Why are they the way that they are? Why? I, I don't know. I mean, I try and think about, for example, let, let's look at a different team. If Daryl Morey makes a move for James Harden and then he explains what he's thinking about the process – you get a little beef, right? And he's not breaking the world here and giving you all the information, but you still get a little bit more knowledge and vision and you see his insight. You just get more of what the move was all about. And I'm trying to compare that to Howie Roseman. I got nothing about what he was thinking with this new trade that happened yesterday with the Saints and how that's going to work. And you don't have to tell us X and O strategic everything. It's not like Daryl Morey breaks down the pick and roll or any sort of sets right. that are going to be ran between Joel and Bede and Maxi and the way that Tobias is going to hang out in the corner maybe as a stretch four. We don't need it to that level, but I need more beef. It's a trust game. I really believe that they're playing a trust game, that they think they're in their own little bubble and anything gets out of the bubble, the trust game breaks. They don't want to tell anybody anything. But my, my bigger thing is, how, you know, we heard, oh, Jalen Rager had, a great, had great practices and he did this and this in practice. Well, we all know that's a bunch of garbage now. Yep, because if he was traded. so right, so, so that was, he be here? That, right. was, that was just, out, out, he just they just kind of threw something against the wall and made it stick. Uh-huh. But when, when I look at this whole process, how do they even know? What are they basing it on? What are you going up against that, that says, this guy had a great practice? You know what? I'll, we'll, me and Broads will go outside. I'll throw him a couple balls. Maybe he'll have a good practice, too. The Eagles will take him. Right. It, they don't even tell us their process. Hey, when we look at this, even though you guys didn't see any of it, we look at this, we look at that. Here are some things that we measure, guys. But, they give us nothing. But my question is, what could the process possibly be you're talking about practices against the same guys every day you get used to going against the same guys every day 